Okay. What do we do with our mind? Some of us. What do some of us do with our mind? Some of us think with our mind. Okay. What do we do with our emotions? We feel. And what do we do with our will? We decide. Who's in our spirit now that we are reborn? The Holy Spirit. So I'm just going to put holy here. Okay. And the Bible says that when the spirit and the soul are at peace and they are communing with each other and they are in conference with each other, what do we call it? A man's heart or a woman's heart. Okay. So that is your heart. Okay. Everybody see that? Okay, what we've, what we've taught you before is what keeps the heart whole and one? What keeps the whole and heart together? Peace. Amen? So the soul, mind, will, and emotions of here are balanced on something called peace. Peace means nothing missing, nothing broken. There's nothing that you're looking for in your, in, in your life that you feel a lack in and you're missing, and there's nothing broken that you're trying to fix constantly. So you're in a state of peace, okay? So, then the Bible says in Romans 12 verse 2, what does it say? It says that we must not conform to the ways of this world, but we should be transformed by the renewing of our mind with the washing of the... How do we renew our minds? With the Word. Okay. So in order for this, these three things to be working correctly, to be working properly, to be making good decisions so that our emotions are not overriding our soul, our emotions are not overriding the way we think and what we decide, or our thoughts are not running away with, them, with themselves and we're feeling all weird and wonderful things and then we land up doing stupid stuff, okay? In order for that to take place... We need to get an identity. Remember? An identity. Remember your fingerprint. On your physical body, one, you're the only one out of seven billion that has this fingerprint, right? But now in order for this thing to work, you need an identity in your soul. Everybody take your fingerprint and put it over here. <laughs> if you can. Okay? You need a fingerprint. So my fingerprint is not really that good, but I'm just going to do that. Not a potato, man. <laughs> okay, so you need, you must remember, God has made you so wonderful. God has made you so individual, so uniquely, okay, that your mind, your will, and your emotions, the way you perceive life will not be the same as anyone else. Amen. Amen. Besides the fact, all the other layers that get put on top of us here, all the other layers of how you get brought up, how you see authority, what's been said to you when you were young, you're useless, you're ugly, you're dumb, you're stupid, you squint, <laughs> whatever, okay? Whatever you've been told, there's, on top of the fact that you are so unique and so individual, the things that you face and you go through life are very unique as well. So you perceive what you are feeling, what you are hearing, completely different to everybody else. Amen. That's why, turn to the person next to you and say, my friend, we need one truth. Listen, if we don't have a reference, one truth to live by, we are in serious trouble. Because you can walk out this door and each and every one of us can decide how we should take revenge on those who have hurt us. And we can justify it and say, no, I feel it should be like this. Somebody could say, no, listen, I must go and steal his car because he stole, stole my handbag. Somebody would go to another place and say, no, I should cut his head off. Are you with me? This, we can't have variants of truth, amen? There's only one truth. Turn to the person next to you and say, truth. Now, who called himself truth? Jesus. It's the way. He's the truth and he's the life, okay? So your soul, your mind, your will and emotions, you need to anchor it on an identity, it can't be the identity that you got from Oma and Opa. It can't be the identity you got from Uncle Jack. Are you with me? Because you have learned so many different behaviors from all these different people. You have to get your identity from the Word of God. Okay? 
So, the word establishes your identity. Okay? So now you've got to understand something. As your identity gets established, okay, it starts to project a framework in your mind of how you think. You start to project a framework, you start to get a new world view, a, biblically, a biblical world view. Turn to the person next to you and say, I want a biblical world view. You don't want a humanistic world view. Are you with me? You don't want a religious world view. You want a biblical world view. Okay? So the word then will bring forth a window and you will look at the world through this framework here. Or paradigm. We call it a paradigm or framework or whatever. And you will, you will look at the world through this window. And as you look through this window, if you're looking at it through your identity that is established, when you look into the world and you look at what the world is chasing after, you don't get tempted. You don't fall into bad relationships. You don't fall into premature relationships. You don't fall into the lusts of money, the lust of the flesh, the, the pride of life. Why? Because when you look into the world through this, this window here that is given to you from your identity, guess what happens? You're looking at it, you're looking at your worldview from a place called worth. Are you with me? Turn to the person next to you. Say, you have worth. The, the gifts and the talents that lie in you, the world will rob you and steal it from you by putting a price to it and saying, you worth this, we'll only pay you that for this. But if you listen to God, God will, and you know your worth, you won't get tempted just to take anything. You'll end up doing the right thing for the right price with the right people.